Um, my husband Mike and I, we uh, run a few websites. Can everybody hear? Because it just feels like I'm talking. Okay. Am I talking too loud? No. Um, we run a few websites and um, I provide, all, I, I do all the content for them and Michael takes care of all the server maintenance and such. So we've really done a division of labor as far as that's concerned. And um, I've talked to quite a few of you. It looks like we're about three quarters uh, bloggers and one quarter uh, programmers and computer web people. So I'm, I'm going to try to work for both of those. Uh, nobody talked about being a musician or anything, but if you are, this will work for you as well. So we're all cool. Um, about um, a few years ago, ah, oh gosh, it was more than three or four years ago, actually, I suffered with a, through a really horrible version of writer's block, where I just could not write a sentence to save my life, and it was horrible. And I have several blogs. I write for um, Starling Fitness, and then I write gadget reviews on the gadgets page. And I write for Starling Travel about doing things, you know, fun things to do when you're out of town. And then I have a personal blog, which I didn't worry about too much, but that I couldn't write. Even on my personal blog, I couldn't write. And um, it's called Pick Me. And then I have a fiction blog that I write for um, once a week called Meriton about a little town that's not too far away from a ski resort that probably is quite identifiable if you've ever lived there. So, um, I, in order to keep up with all of those, I had to write seven entries a day, Monday through Friday. And um, I got to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't write an entry in a month much less seven entries a day. And it was heartbreaking for me because it's not like I didn't have ideas. It's just, they, it's like they couldn't come out of my fingers. And um, I truly felt like someone had stolen my mojo, like Dr. Evil had come and taken whatever magic thing that made, it, made me able to write before had taken it away from me, and if I just could find that little jerk, I could get it back. <laughs> but unfortunately, I couldn't find him, so I had to get it back on my own. Now, I'm here to tell you that no matter who you are, no matter what you do creatively, you can get your mojo back, and I can tell you how to do it. Fortunately, this sort of thing happens to everybody, to writers, painters. I mean, there are famous people who have talked about not being able to create when it, creating was so easy for them before, all of a sudden it doesn't work. Now, my biggest problem, um, my biggest problem was that whenever I read a book on this, you kind of had to believe in God or the universe or the muses, which if you believe in those things, great on you. <laughs> because there are tons and tons of books, hundreds of books that will tell you how to placate your God or to make sacrifices or whatever it is. But it doesn't work for me because, unfortunately, I'm missing that gene or whatever it is that makes you believe in God. So all of this stuff that I'm going to show you will work no matter whether you believe in God or not. So there's nobody to placate, just yourself, and you can start working on it today. Today. After this presentation, I'm going on this regimen, <laughs> actually. So what you need to understand is that somehow you've injured yourself. If you're feeling blocked right now, and you feel like you want to get out of Dodge, and you want to leave town, and you want to hide from your work, or you want to wish that blog never existed, or you just want to delete it, if you're feeling like that, you've injured yourself. If your blogger is forcing every word out of your fingers, you've injured yourself. If you're a programmer who feels like you can't squash a single bug, you've injured yourself. And if you are a photographer who can see beautiful things all around you but can't get them to come through on the camera, you've injured yourself somehow. And just like that runner who snapped his tendon, you need to be gentle with yourself at this time. 
forcing yourself to work and pump out words out of your fingers isn't going to help you heal. It's not what you need right now. You need to heal. What you don't need is guilt. You absolutely do not need guilt. Instead of beating yourself about all, uh, up about all the work that you haven't done, what you need is sympathy. You need compassion and respect. Just like someone who has a sprained ankle, you're not going to say, hey, you ran 5K yesterday, why can't you run 5K today? That's just as cruel as telling a blogger, hey, you wrote five entries yesterday, why can't you write five entries today? You've got to be careful and gentle with yourself, and you need to heal yourself just like that runner. Exactly like that runner, you'll use the exact same techniques. You can heal, just, you, you can heal yourself with rest, ice, compression, and elevation. So when you've sprained your ankle, they tell you to rest, put ice on it, wrap it up, and elevate it. This is exactly the same because your creativity is a muscle, just like your, your hand springs and your, all those muscles that I, are not in my head anymore. <laughs> Anatomy was so long ago. Okay, so let's go over these in detail. Rest. Okay, when I was dealing with my writer's block, Mike said, uh, Laura, you need a break. And I snapped at him. I, I went Cujo on him. I, I was like, need a break? I don't need a break. I've been taking a freaking break for like three or four months. I haven't written anything for over a month. But not being able to create is not the same as not creating. It's not the same as consciously stepping away from your work and saying, I'm not thinking about that right now. I'm not even going to work on that right now. So you need to take a step away from whatever is you're blocked on for at least a week. Now, if you're a programmer and you program for someone else, or you're a writer who writes for someone else, you need to save up those vacation times so that you can take a full week off, preferably two weeks. I took a month, but I have the luxury to be able to do something like that, but at least a week or two weeks away from your work. And I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Without guilt, because we crushed guilt before. Um, the most important thing is that you're taking a rest from work without guilt. That's the most important thing during this time. Now, the second step is ice. You need to put all your current projects on ice. Just like you would ice your ankle after a sprained ankle, you need to put it on ice. Um, you don't have to finish them. You don't have to finish those projects. If you're a blog writer, sorry to break it to you, but your blog readers aren't going to miss you. No matter how popular you are. I, I, during that three months that I was gone, I had two comments. One was like, what, what's happening? It was on the fiction blog. Where I was like, what's happening to Randy and Sierra? They haven't posted for weeks. And I, I one person and then another person on Starling Fitness. So. No matter how many hits you get every day, they're probably not going to notice that you're gone for a week. So, plus, you're having trouble writing anyway. So it's okay to put your projects on ice. In fact, some people never recover from this and quit completely. And that, it's okay to never come back to it, but you can, you can always come back to it later. Now, if you're a programmer, and you work for someone else, that's a little harder. And that's why it's especially important to gather your vacation time so that you can take some time off. But for now, put all your projects on ice. Now the third step is compression. So once you consciously give up the guilt for a week of not working, and once you put all your projects on ice, once you do that, you're going to find that the ideas are going to start coming back to you. And you're going to get so excited that you're going to want to pump out 10 blog entries in a day. Or you're going to want to fix all those bugs that you were having trouble with on the code. Or you're not allowed to do that. 
Your ideas will still come, but you need to wrap them up in one place. Just like you need to wrap up your ankle if you're injured, you need to wrap up those ideas so you don't forget them, because they're still important ideas. But you're not allowed to work on them over the next week. So find a place to document them. Take a picture. If you're an artist, it can help to take a picture. If you're a photographer, I don't know what you do. <laughs> but um, write down ideas, write down places that you liked, that were beautiful, that you want to take pictures of. Um, if you are a writer, jot down just enough to remind you what you were going to say. If you're a programmer, jot down just enough so that you remember how to squish that bug, but don't, don't work on it. And by all means, do not turn these new ideas into new projects to feel guilty about. Because that's what happened to me the first time I did this. Was I started Starling, and I started a new blog, I can't remember, which I think was Starling Travel, during this. And Mike's like, um, you're taking a break. <laughs> Don't start a new thing to feel guilty about. So I had to put it on hold for a while and wrap it up. So finally, the most healing thing that will happen to you when you're doing this is will come from elevation. Um, now, there are literally hundreds of ideas out there on elevation. And since you're not allowed to write or draw or program or take <coughs> pictures, what are you going to do with yourself for this week and a half? You need something to do with yourself to heal, you, heal what you've broken and to re, refresh your feeling of creativity. And these are ideas on to do that. Now, I'm only going to show you in detail the few that have worked for me over the last four years or so. Um, but there's literally hundreds if you go looking in books. So the first is to totally immerse yourself in the art of others. So Josh Billings said that about the most originality that any writer can hope to achieve, honestly, is to steal with good judgment. <laughs> so immerse yourself in the art of others. If you can't create, look at what others have created. So, writers should read, painters should visit museums and buy art books, photographers should take, get those photography books or go to an Ansel Adams exhibit. That's the only photography exhibit I could tell you about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, programmers should look at code libraries. Um, really immerse yourself. Musicians should listen to music. Really immerse yourself in what other people have done within your field. Because this is one method of, of really rejuvenating your feeling of creativity. But remember, you'll get new ideas, but you still need to rest during this time. You're not allowed to create just to listen, to read, to, to look at pictures. Now, another one is the complete opposite, is to go on an art fast absolute opposite. No books, no magazines, no TV, no museums, no music of any kind, no, no Twitter, no computer. That's my biggest input of media, to go on a complete media fast. Um, you can do anything, but you have to stay away from media. Here's some ideas. I. That when I did this, I cleaned my house, I visited family, I organized the house, I exercised, I paid bills, I helped Mike learning about the server and how to update it and do the technical programming sides of things, which probably technically I shouldn't have done, but that's, to me, that didn't seem like writing, so that seemed okay in my, my ideas. What you need to do is really let yourself get hungry for it. Mike and I inadvertently did this to ourselves when we went to Hawaii. We, we stayed at a resort that didn't have TV in the room, didn't have, our car had a radio, but the radio didn't work up in Hanalei because you couldn't ca get any signals. Um, we, we had no TV, no nothing, no internet access. Plus, compounded with that, we were immersing ourselves in nature and a different um, environment. So we had a trifecta of creativity explosion after Hawaii, and we blamed it on Hawaii. We probably could have done that right at home if we had just gone on a media fast at home. So there's a way to do it without. Now, another thing is bathe yourself in a different kind of art. Oliver Wendell Holmes said, 
that um, if you take a music bath once or twice a week for a few sessions, you'll find that it is to the soul what the water bath is to the body. Now what this is, is um, this is a very similar technique to the first one, except immerse yourself in a different kind of art. So instead of writers reading, you're a writer, so you should be doing something different, like looking at art at all the museums in the city and looking at art books in every bookstore in the city. If you're a programmer, you don't immerse yourself in programming languages. You immerse yourself in <coughs> music. Take a music bath and listen to everything on your iPod. Have you ever done that? Like my iPod's so big, it would literally take over a week to listen to everything on the iPod. And that's something that you can do. But it's different because it, you do it in a completely different art medium than your own. So. Um, Yes, and that is a good technique to do it. I need to not have, be, when I'm writing, I need to listen to music. It doesn't have words, though. Um, and the next idea is to expose yourself to nature, which is what Mike and I did in Hawaii when we were visiting there. Um, Jane Austen said in her book, uh, Mansfield Park, she said, one cannot fix eyes upon the nat commonest natural production without finding food for a rambling fan fancy. This is... Probably not what she meant. Um, but honestly, you don't need to spend a lot of money to expose yourself to nature. You can take a hike in the canyons. We've got Timpanogos up there and all the mountains and the canyons up there. You can take a drive to a local wild area like Antelope Island, the Great Salt Lake, even up to Bear Lake. That's not too far away. You can visit the local zoos and the aquarium. There's Hobel Zoo and we have... That living aquarium place that has the penguins at it is another way to expose yourself to nature. Take a drive through the desert. Meriton was born completely of driving. I, it, was, it was founded completely driving from here to Oregon and back is where it originally came from. Because we took a drive for something for Mike, and when we, by the time we came back, I had a new blog that I was starting, fiction blog. And another thing is just take a walk to a nearby park. So during your week, you don't necessarily have to spend a week in the woods or two weeks in the woods like Henry David Thoreau did. You can, you can just personally just take, go up to the mountains. There's a wide variety of things that you can do inexpensively to rejuvenate yourself. Now another idea is to travel to a different locale. So this was the, that third thing that Mike and I did in Hawaii was to go to a different place. And almost every famous artist has an experience that has changed them like this. For example, George Harrison from the Beatles went to India and came back, and all his music was completely different when he came back. Um, Paul Simon went to South Africa, he came back, and Graceland was the product of that. He, uh, now let's see who else, uh, Somerset Mom traveled to China, and all the gossip that he heard around there became the Painted Veil. So there, are, almost every famous artist has had a different locale really, really change them. This guy is Alex McCaw. He's a uh, programmer and a writer for O'Reilly Books. And he said that the peculiar thing about programmers is that they're the one profession that can easily work remotely and travel, and yet they're the one profession that doesn't. Of course, there are exceptions, but on my travels, I didn't meet another programmer who did anything similar, and it's a sad state of affairs. My message to fellow programmers is to stop making excuses, man up, and do it. And honestly, to travel to a different locale, you don't need a lot of money. And you don't need to go very far. Um, we are here in Salt Lake, mostly, so you can, firstly, you can call a friend in a different city and say, hey, uh, I'm feeling a little crazy right now. Can I come sleep on your couch? And they'll probably say, how crazy are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Once you convince them that you're not going to hurt them, you can very, very inexpensively visit, go to a different town, sleep on someone's couch, and really immerse yourself in the culture of a different area. Now, not everybody can do that. I, not everybody has friends in different places with couches. So um, one thing that you can do is we live in Salt Lake, so we could go to a smaller town like Heber or Fairview, someplace small.
small and close and really immerse yourself in that tiny little town. That's how Meriton, that's what happened when I went to Oregon in Meriton, although it's not, all the gossip comes from somewhere else. <laughs> Um, you can also, we live in Salt Lake, let's go to a bigger city, like Denver. Denver's a drive away, one drive away, one day's drive away. Los Angeles, uh, one very hard day's drive away. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, you can completely see a different life. Even though you go to Denver and it looks very much like Salt Lake, it's actually a very different feel. It's got a different vibe. Now, if you eat at Applebee's every Tuesday night here, don't do that when you go to Denver or to Los Angeles. Really immerse yourself in that city, whatever city it may be. And talk to the locals. Some of the best books written are gossip from other places. So, and that's, everybody loves to hear gossip. So, uh, okay. Now, there are tons and tons of other elevation ideas. I haven't tried these ones, and you'll understand why in just a second. First one is to take a vow of silence. That ain't never gonna happen for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just never gonna be able to do that. But for some people, they find that their creativity flows when they block the ability to speak. Now, for some of us, we don't talk a lot in person, but we talk a lot other places. We talk on Twitter, we talk on Pinterest, we talk on Facebook. Taking a vow of silence from those places might be very helpful. I haven't tried it. I can't vouch for it, but a lot of people really, really uh, live by the vow of silence. Um, another thing is to learn a new sport. So sometimes getting in your body, like doing something physically, really helps your brain. I know when I'm having trouble, if I take a walk, it really helps. But really immersing yourself for that week or two weeks in learning how to ride a mountain bike down steep hills that will kill you or learning how to you know run for five minutes without dying those sorts of things will really get you out of your head and into your body and so and who knows if you ever use that sport ever again and if it gets your creativity running again awesome that's great so another idea is to do volunteer work not only do you get juicy, wonderful gossip from those sorts of places where you do volunteer work, um, at, you get that feeling of doing something good for somebody else. It's like feeding the soul or something. I know, I know a lot of people vouch for this. I'm horrible and evil and I will never do volunteer work, sorry. Um, <laughs> Another uh, thing that people talk about is learning a new language. That's probably why Somerset Mom had such creativity boosts when he went to Tahiti and when he went to China is because he had to learn these different languages for the areas that he was visiting. And sometimes, especially if you're a writer, sometimes trying to figure out how to speak in another language makes speaking in your own language more enlightening somehow. And so a lot of people, me, personally, I actually tried this a little bit, and it helped, because I, all I wanted to do was learn how to say, thank you, and uh, here's your tip, and hello, and goodbye, in Vietnamese, to the girl who did my nails. And just learning that and, and helped me creatively. I mean, I didn't go through a whole two-week process. I just learned a couple phrases, and that, was, that helped me. Learning a whole new language is another way to get way better. And finally, finding Jesus. There are so many artists who have had enlightenment. They've found some spiritual thing that has helped them creative, creatively. I've never been able to do this, but for the people that it works for, they, they rave and rave about it. So if you can do it, more power to you. That's great. You're lucky. I wish I had that. So, now you've had your week or two weeks off, and you're actually feeling a little better. And you've wrapped up your ideas, and you've got some ideas that you want to work on, and you're excited. Yeah, calm down. You need to ease into work, or you will injure yourself again. We don't want that. Do not assume that you can do as much after this as when you were before you got injured. 
That would be like asking that guy who snapped his tendon to run a 5K right after. He's not going to do that. He's going to start walking first a little bit, and then he's going to run for maybe a minute, and then walk, and run for a minute, and then walk. He's not good, and that's what you need to do with your creativity. So when I did this, I took it really slow. For the first week, I wrote one entry a day. And even though I needed to write seven entries a day to be caught up in my mind, I only wrote one entry a day. And I wanted to write, like, because I had so many ideas, I wanted to write like 15 entries in that first day and get a backlog going so that I wouldn't have to, just in case this happened to me again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be out of ideas. And um, I didn't. Mike was very good at blocking my access to our blogs. So once I wrote my, <laughs> so I wrote one entry and I had to quit at that day. And I did that for a week. And then the next week I wrote two entries and quit at, for the day. And, and then I worked back up to seven entries a day. And that really helped me. Now, if you're feeling blocked again, because like if you accidentally write 15 entries in one day, because it felt really good and you had a lot of good ideas and you were doing really good, squashed 15 bugs that day, and the next day you're feeling blocked again, go back, right back to rice. Go back to resting and putting your ideas on ice for a little while, even if it's just for one day. And documenting your new ideas, wrapping up your new ideas, and do some sort of elevation thing, even if it's just a quick one for one day. You need to treat yourself with care and sympathy and respect, because this is hard. Being creative every day is hard hard work. And to other people it doesn't look that hard because you just sit down and you draw a picture. Or you just sit down and you whip out a, like a thousand words in one day and people are amazed. And it, it doesn't, it's, it's hard work even though it doesn't look hard from far away. So be nice to yourself. Which is something that, I, I mean me working for myself I've the, I'm the worst boss I've ever had because I'm way meaner to me than I would have ever put up with it, another boss being. So, I, you can get your mojo back. You can, I, I am here to tell you that you, if you felt locked and you felt like you want to quit and that maybe I'm out of ideas. Maybe I said all the things that I need to say. If you feel like that, you can get it back. You can feel better about it and be, all you have to do is take some rest and put those ideas on ice for a while and wrap up those new ideas for a bit until you can work on them and do something to elevate your creativity. And then once you do that, ease back into work gently and carefully, <clears throat> treating yourself with respect. If you do that, you will be able to create for your entire life and you'll be like Grandma Moses doing pictures even at 120 years old or 106 or however old she was. So that's all I have to say. Um, do we have any questions? Or if you're feeling blocked and I didn't answer what you needed, anybody out there with questions or ideas? Yes, you. Do you have any advice about how to not your I do. I actually have an entire another presentation about how to avoid burnout. <laughs> actually, and um, things to do to prevent, to prevent that. Um, the best one for me is to realizing that I'm starting to feel blocked very quickly. And now I don't need a, a full month taken off like I used to. Now I can just take maybe a couple days or a weekend and go camping like we are doing this weekend. So that's, um, that's some of the things I do, but I actually have an entire, that's what I was going to do for next year for work camp. So Next year, come to WordCamp and you will get how to prevent burnout, how, how to st stop losing mojo in the first place. So there was another question. Yes. Yeah, how do you best, well, I'm, I'm a graphic designer, so I'll be working on a project and then I'll be interrupted by another project. What's the best way to transition? Because sometimes you'll have like, you know, a dark, sad theme and then you're going to a bright, happy theme. What's the best way to transition? Oh, that's a very good question. The question is, if you couldn't hear, was, how do you transition between um, um, when you're interrupted with 
several projects. How do you transition between them, especially when they are so different? Um, for me, I do grouping. So I'll just, if I need to write seven entries a day, sometimes I'll write seven entries for Starling Fitness on Monday, seven entries for Starling Travel on another, get a backlog. And so that helps me, but not everybody has that freedom, especially when you're a programmer and you're working for somebody else, because you'll be working on one thing, like trying to prevent people from invading your site using certain hacks, and someone else will come and say, I can't get into what, or this is always crashing for me, or why is this just spinning for me? And so you don't really have the control, and I think sometimes the feeling of not having control is the worst part of it. And um, set some boundaries. Th that is a good idea. Uh, what was your name again? Matt. Matt just said uh, one idea is to maybe set boundaries and say, I'm going to be working right now. I will be available for questions and answers at two or after lunch or whatever. That's a, that's what some people do. I, that's what I did when I was a real estate agent. That, that's any other questions or ideas? Like anybody else have other ideas on boosting your creativity? Making yes. from one theme or something that's so drastically different from the other. Um, this summer, I mean, you can't by looking at me. I took up writing again, mm -hmm. and that's helped me a lot. To you're working on something, and then you need to completely change or swap to what because I have more than one website, so I work on this one. I work on a lot of times to get up and go out for a run or something mm -hmm. similar will help break that so that you can get the impression. That is a really good idea. What she said was that if you are working, uh, if you have one thing that's drastically different from another and you need to switch, do something physical in between, go for a walk, go for a run. And actually, maybe some of, any of these techniques on a really short scale, like a 5, 10, 15 minute scale, would work for you. So I'm working on dark, evil, steampunk stories. It, and now I need to work on light, fluffy, maritime stories. Between those, maybe listen to some music or um, take, a, take a look at some art books or some photography books, something in to, to clean, cleanse your palate between. Ash? Yeah, I think going on with cleansing, too, is shut that project down. Yes. Like, don't leave it up and say, oh, I'm going to come back to that. Shut it down completely. Mm -hmm. Right, reset, whether it's physically getting up, walking away, coming back, and then opening the new. Because otherwise, we're in two places at once. So Excellent really idea. Down. That Ash said to shut that project completely down. So if you write for two blogs, close that tab for Starling Fitness before you start writing for Starling Travel. So, yes, Greg? I work from home, uh -huh. and I never leave that house. Yep. And so, <laughs> I mean, Me thank too. heavens for church on Sunday because it's the only time I have Oh, poor me, no God. You're more than close. Uh, what I do is in the morning, I turn off the computer. So when, when I'm done at 5, 6 o'clock for dinner, I shut the computer down so that when I come in or come back to work in the evenings, you know, I'm on a different project, but I turn the computer on afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, it's closing down is good, but for me, it really works. So I just sit down and take that time for the computer, I mean, yes, it's a PC, for it to load to actually refresh myself. Exactly. And some days it takes longer. That's a good idea. It's amazing how much symbol, sim symbolism there is in the act of turning your computer off. Like complete, not just closing it and having a little light turn off, but completely turning that sucker off. So it's going to have to reboot. You're going to have to look at that stupid apple again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a very symbolic thing, and that's the end of my day. And if I want to just hop on, and I'm going to think twice about hopping right back on. That's a good way to prevent burnout. Roland. But after you've uh, done your, uh, you know, your rice and you're actually ready to come back, uh -huh. the, uh, and you're going to ease yourself into it, mm -hmm. how much self-revelation do you put into the fact that, oh my God, it's been like, you know, weeks since I've been here, and I'm sorry, and I'm falling on my sword? 
or do you just you tie know, back into what you're doing? You know what? I, I that's a good question. Roland's asking, how much do you apologize to your blog readers or your employee customers, your customers or your employee, your boss when you're programming for somebody else? I don't believe how much do you apologize? apologize? To them, or, or say, <laughs> me, I don't, because I realized that I was months without writing, and only two people noticed. So I didn't apologize when I came back. I wrote a personal letter to the two people who commented and said, I'm going through some weird stuff right now. I don't know if I'm ever coming back. Said, well, tell me what happened to Randy and see. Okay, they're leaving because <laughs> the premise of Meriton is there's this uh, haunted kind of house in a small town that's very close to a ski resort that nobody's lived in for more than two years since the Bowens left. And so Randy and Sierra had moved into this. Well, of course they're going to move out because nobody's lived there for more than two years. She didn't want to hear that. She's like, can't they stay? Can't we let them stay? But they did move out. And now we have a new member, a pers new person living there, and she's going to have to go to. But, <laughs> but anyway, I don't know what I was talking about. Did apologize. I answer? Do not apologize. They don't care. I know that sounds horrible because they don't, they don't miss you when you're gone. But it's also very liberating because they don't miss me when I'm gone. And as long as they subscribe to me on RSS, RS, like, R, hello, RSS feeds, I'll show up again in their lives. It's not like they're going to forget I was there. I'm going to show up on Google Reader or is Blogline still exist? Well, who's using what, is it? Is Google Maker the only one in town or is there something else? Oh, Lordy, that's not safe. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> I like it better before they do that Google Plus thing. But <laughs> anyway, um, they'll, don't apologize. They'll, they'll find you again. If they liked you before, they will be delighted that you're back. And if they didn't catch that you were back for like a couple of weeks or months or whatever, they'll have a whole bunch of stuff to read. And they'll be so excited about it. So don't, I, I never say, oh, it's been so long since I've written here. I just immediately start right back in. So any other questions? I thought I saw a hand over here. Ah, oh, yes. I didn't talk to you before. What's your no, name? My name's Yvette. Yvette, hi. Hi. Um, I... I think it's best to, I think it's okay to acknowledge that you were gone, you know, in case somebody doesn't want to read. But then if you just focus on what it is that I want to read, nobody wants to read a long apology and excuses. But, um, and if it's like in a business situation, then you just say what you're going to do to not let it happen again and say that the break you know, really helps you. Yeah. Yeah, and there are a lot of people who apologize. I mean, there's always good matters to apologize. I was raised in a barn. Don't listen to me. <laughs> so I don't know. I never apologize. I just assume that they're going to find me if they lost me. And if I'm still on their RSS, I'll show up again and they'll be, oh, hey, she hasn't written in a while. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, Lord, glad you're back. So, anybody else? Okay, that's all I got. I'm a little, oh, wait, wait. I was saying for me, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand this about me, but I take power naps. Set an alarm, and that will bring you, revive you, and make you feel better. 
That's one thing that I didn't talk about on here. I'm assuming that you're a healthy individual who's not <laughs> sick. I'm assuming you're getting enough sleep. All of those things, not getting enough sleep, not having trouble with their, your digestion or your, your heart palpitating or all those sorts of things can cause a wide range of interruptions into your creativity. So um, that's if you're having trouble to prevent burnout, sometimes the most important thing is to focus on your body and make sure you're getting enough sleep, eating correctly, although they change what's correct every other day, so I don't know. But, um, that's, but that's a really good thing, yeah. Anybody else, other ideas? Oh, awesome, very cool. Hey, well thank you. If you have any further questions, that's my Twitter thing, and you can always leave comments on my blog, and I answer them, kind of. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs>